We're going to talk about LinkedIn and we're going to talk about why LinkedIn, what LinkedIn is, and more importantly, how we as hospitality owners can use LinkedIn to get our name out there, to get more eyes on our business, to get maybe different eyes on our business and how we can take advantage of it. Uh, for those of you who are thinking, is this video right for me? This video is right for everybody. LinkedIn is getting very, very, very popular at the moment. And even if you just take the basics of LinkedIn and apply it to your profile, then you'll already get a head start on so many of the hospitality owners who aren't even using this platform. So I reached out to Rob. Uh, he is um, from a company called Think Ific, but he's sort of branching out and doing his own little cool things. And I've known Rob for a long time now, maybe 18 months, ever since I started um, putting the Boostly Academy on Think Ific. Uh, we've spoken on a number of times, so I was so excited to be able to get him into the community, into the academy, uh, and he will be able to answer questions afterwards. But before we get started, um, for those of you who don't know Rob, um, we're going to get him on and we're going to let him introduce himself, and then we'll get started. So Rob, buddy, it's, it's over to you. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. I'm really excited to to jam with you, uh, Mark, and talk about LinkedIn. Um, I think it's a really cool platform. It's been around for a while, but um, I think it's kind of making a uh, sort of its next wave here. Um, you know, it's been kind of forgotten, but um, it's doing a lot of cool things as far as its features. Um, that I think it's going to be really appealing to a lot of uh, the people that are watching this video. So yeah, super excited. So where are you right now, Rob? Where where are uh, you? Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Uh, so I'm in Vancouver, Canada. So that's where we're all based. Uh, everyone here at Thinkific is based here in Vancouver, and so um, yeah, it's out here. It's uh, it's a little cold today uh, as we're recording this, but um, yeah, that's where we're at. Love to be in Bali. If yeah, you want to well, switch, the, the time zones are, are crazy. So right now, 15 hours ahead of Vancouver. So to get my little brain to try and figure out. The times, it, it was insane, but we, we were there. Five o'clock in the morning here, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, I think, <laughs> in, uh, in Vancouver. So I'm officially talking to Rob in the future. Um, <laughs> with totally different days, totally different time zones. But yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's amazing, and I really appreciate you taking the time out to do this. So let's go to the basics then. What exactly, mm -hmm. for those of you who are watching this thinking, well, what even is LinkedIn? Can you just explain what LinkedIn is in its absolute simplicity? You know what, I think if I'm gonna define LinkedIn now, LinkedIn is a social media network. You know, it's much like Facebook, um, it's much like Instagram, you know, Twitter. It, it is one of those now. Um, I think in the past, and I really even myself wasn't really too um, invested into LinkedIn in the past. It was more of a, a resume site, right, where you went to, look for a job or, um, you know, try to look for people to hire. Um, it was sort of a marketplace for that. Um, but now, very much now, with um, the introduction of videos a little while ago, um, you know, you can upload videos. Now there's also the start of live videos, which is um, starting, I think I saw my first LinkedIn live video last week. Um, through a couple of my friends that are, are very much invested into LinkedIn. So it's a, it's a social platform, you know, just like Facebook, just like Instagram, just like Twitter. Um, you know, it's a place where you can engage, you know, you can grow your own audience. Um, you know, you can upload content that's engaging and then link out and point people to your website and your landing pages and all those things. So it's a very powerful platform. I think you definitely hit the nail on the head there. And this is where the, the, the common misconception of LinkedIn is, is that you, you think of it as a resume site. And that's, that is probably what they will admit back in the day mm -hmm. is, is, is what it was. I mean, um, I've been on there since um, 2008, 2009, I believe, when I was looking for a job in London. I, I, I got my, I just treated it like a CV. And it's definitely progressed and progressed and progressed and evolved and re-evolved. And, and it's at a stage now where, and I haven't got the stats to hand, but it is, it is one of those social media networks that people are going back to on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, you, get, you get different type of potential guests and potential customers on LinkedIn. You, mm -hmm. um, people are going there because you just get a different type of vibe and a different type of audience on 
LinkedIn. And it is, it is so different. It's, it's different from, from every other type of, of, of social media network. Uh, there are a lot of networking going on. I mean, I, I always say that with, with hospitality and Twitter, I think Twitter is one where you don't really go on Twitter to reach out to potential guests. You go to reach out to other potential hospitality owners to do, you know, to find maybe suppliers and whatnot. And I think, and I think with LinkedIn, that is like the step up from that. So yes, you can use LinkedIn to, um, find potential guests and we are we can delve into some tactics that you can maybe do to do so but mm -hmm. it, it's also going to be a great way of just networking with maybe other hospitality owners in your area maybe other uh, local businesses that you can maybe um, do potential deals with in the future but it's it's also a phenomenal platform just to get your name to, to, to get your name and your business out there so um, so what would you say then, Rob, since, uh, and, and how long have you been using Thinkific, uh, not Thinkific, uh, LinkedIn, sorry. How long have you been using uh, yeah. LinkedIn? Yeah. You know what? I think I've probably had, I've had a LinkedIn account for a number of years, yeah. uh, probably several years now, um, but I haven't really started using it um, since maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, started creating a lot more content. Uh, started creating a lot more as soon as they uh, opened it up for video content started creating a lot of videos Just because naturally I was already creating a lot of videos on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and so You know just understanding, you know how people are these days, you know video content is just much more engaging um, It gets a lot more reach obviously because as you know if you're getting a lot of engagement You're getting a lot of reach as well it goes hand in hand uh, so started playing with videos on LinkedIn and just saw a lot of success with it getting a lot of reach organically So yeah, so the, the answer is uh, yeah, but I'd say about 18 months is um, When it's how long I've been taking LinkedIn really seriously So let's delve into the to the absolute basics then when when you're setting up a, a, a LinkedIn account and you're looking at what everybody else is doing and, and you've, you're very fortunate to know some of the best of the best when it comes to LinkedIn, but to social media in general. What, what are the core basics that you should be looking to achieve when, you, when you're creating your, your LinkedIn bio, your LinkedIn profile? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, there's a couple things. I'll just kind of go down the list of things that I, I noticed when I when I go in, you know, obviously every day you're connecting with new people. And so the ones, you know, you're not going to accept the connection request from everyone. The ones that I do, though, tend to have obviously a profile picture. So have a really nice, crisp profile picture. Now, depending on your business, if you're a hospitality business, then you want to be a little bit more, um, you want to be in your element, right? Maybe in front of your property. Um, you know, you don't want it to be too corporate, you know, obviously if you're a corporate, um, if that's your, you know, if that's your space and that's who you want to attract, then you want to be more corporate. But if you go to my LinkedIn profile, literally I'm like in a black t-shirt in a coffee shop, holding a coffee, like the coffee itself is in the picture. So, you know, mm -hmm. very relaxed. I'm so I'm in the social media space. And so, um, you know, a really nice crisp profile picture. So that's a definite must, um, your bio like take advantage of your bio you do have a title so when you come up on someone's feed and if you request to be connected with somebody they're gonna see sort of like this little blurb you know um, about you and so you want to put down who you are and what you do um, you know within you know and have have a little bit of a you know sort of a, a human side to it as well so don't just say like hey business owner entrepreneur like you know, be really specific and um, play to, you know, to your, to your personality. So for mine, I have my hashtag, you know, hashtag Rob Balasabas, and I'll kind of explain why I do that uh, in a second, but I have video and content strategist, live, live stream video creator, social media marketer. And then at the end, I just kind of add coffee and tacos, right? Like with a little heart emoji. Um, again, just, like you know, be, be a little bit more, be a little bit fun. Um, you know, for sure for you guys, if you have a specific area that you service, then you might want to put it in there. Um, you know, if you're like, Hey, uh, London, right. Or like London, uh, Airbnb owner or something like that, that way they can identify who you are right away. Um, yeah. yeah. And then, um, there's a section here also where you have sort of like, and about you and um, 
maybe what I'll do uh, is I'll share, uh, I'll share it with Mark and maybe some type of screenshot or something. Um, but you want to put in, like for me, I, I really take advantage of that, in front, that, that space to kind of tell people, you know, what I do, but more importantly, who I can help, right? So for me, I help uh, entrepreneurs, coaches, online course creators, freelancers, and service providers. It's sort of like, sort of like a little bit more narrowed down. And so then like, who do you help? And then how do you help them? Um, and then also, um, you know, how they can contact you or uh, your website, or, you know, if you have some type of, um, you know, promotion or landing page or anything, you want to put it in there. Um, so that's, that's a really key space. Um, I also add in there just because for me, I do a lot of um, networking and so on. So yeah, there you go, Mark. Perfect. I'm going to help um, you out. I was just grabbing your, I appreciate your... that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. So you'll see at the top there, just because I do a lot of networking and obviously those networking for me is one of my primary activities um, in what I do. And so I'm putting it there just to let people know that, hey, I'm going to be in San Diego. I'm going to be in San Francisco. I'd love to meet with you. That's a key part of what I do. So mm -hmm. for you, you might be doing some type of um, event or, you know, something's happening at your property or you're going, you know, to a specific location for like a conference or something. Um, you might want to put it in there as well, right? Um, I, I do like um, I do like what you're talking about here. So just to circle back very quickly, uh, suit your style and be specific. So this is what we're talking about with with the, with the profile image. Um, you know, a nice a nice picture, um, clearly of you. One, one one of the things, the feedback that I got back uh, with LinkedIn is, don't have a group shot. Just have a picture of you in here because it helps distinguish who is you. You know um we've all got profile pictures i mean if you look at the majority on the right hand side here it's all sort of headshots now doesn't mean go have a professional headshot done like rob is literally having one in a, in a coffee shop here where these you know these do look more um professionally done headshots but just you know just have a picture of you um, and make it stand out and um you've gone very fancy here with the, the cover picture I, I like this you know you really clear on on what you are and who you are what, what you do so for hospitality owners in here you could just have a cover image of your property and you mm -hmm. all know how to use canva we've done a canva training you could get a picture of your property words over the top would just be um for example our family business granary farm stay in, in scarborough book direct for the best rates uh, mm -hmm. send me a message or go to granary uh, dot code at UK. Okay. Like, that would be really clear with, again, be specific. So it would be owner of the granary farm state in Scarborough, um, you know, 14 bedroom guest house, three holiday cottages, um, book direct, send message, you know, so something like this mm -hmm. where you're getting really clear on what your LinkedIn profile is all about. Because when somebody were to see you maybe in the organic search, so this is, um, this, is, this is the LinkedIn homepage. And we're talking about this is the organic search here. So when mm -hmm. someone's scrolling, scrolling, and they see, this is the title here. So Ed, you all know Ed Davies. And this is what they see. Ed Davies, helping busy, da 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 da, da. So yours would be Granary Farm State Owner. So it's right in the title there. So when somebody's looking at the network request, so this is what we're talking about, you're going to get requests all the time here. That is what mm -hmm. people are going to see. So you've got to be really clear from the start who you are, what you do. So I, I really do like that. And obviously Rob has got in here. This is the, the bio. This is the description. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, really clear, really concise. Rob's got all the events that he's going to be doing. But, yeah, I just wanted to circle back. So what are the other basics, Rob? Yeah. Um, so I was going to say, too, just the, the, yeah, you kind of touched on there, the banner. Uh, again, prime real estate, it's the, literally the first thing people see up there. Uh, so having, again, sort of a reflection of your, uh, your bio, um, right away, like what do you do? Um, and even a call to action. So don't be afraid to put in a call to action. For me, it's this virtual coffee. Essentially it's a free, you know, it's a cons consultation call. Um, and it tells them where to find that. So, you know, send me a direct message or, uh, go into my contact info. You'll find the link to book, um, a call with me. So that's, that's really like, as far as basics. That's done. Um, Mark touched on a really good tool, Canva. Um, I also like this tool, Mark. I'm not sure if you've already been playing with it, but Easel, 
Easel is a really good tool as well. No, um, how do you spell that? Uh, E-A-S-I-L dot com. I like that. Um, yeah, really cool tool. Uh, they're based out of Australia, you know, and um, they've got templates for all this stuff. Um, so, yeah, so and amazing templates tool. Templates for banners? Yeah, banners, Instagram stories, like everything. So, okay. um, yeah. You know really, I'll be really doing today. Tool. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes four hours of your life no uh yeah yeah <laughs> so um, cool yeah. so that, that's some really good basis really good advice be specific be clear who you're talking to you know very similar to what we spoke about with with all social medias be clear who you're talking to just like your website be clear who you're talking to talk to like your your niche so if you focus on um the corporate clients the the midweek businesses that are coming into town etc speak to them if you know if you're focusing on family stay properties don't think you can't speak on linkedin because at the end of the day and i always say this if if you um it doesn't matter what platform on at the end of the day everybody that you see here is human and not a robot they may have families they may be looking for a vacation they may, may not be specifically going on to linkedin to look for a holiday but subconsciously if you just put your bio out there and just say hey you know we're a farm stay family friendly property in in yorkshire and they come on to linkedin every day and they're just seeing nothing but ads and content around business and then they just see some a nice video or a nice image just to say this could be our next vacation it's pattern disrupt and mm -hmm. everybody on LinkedIn is talking about, um, you know, this is my product. This is what you should be doing. This is how you do X, Y, Z. And if you just throw up a uh, escape LinkedIn, escape your business, this is your next staycation. That's the pattern mm -hmm. disrupt. That's what they're going to click on that. They're going to see you. And it's just doing something a little bit different to stand out. So then Colin here might be thinking, oh, you know, this looks really nice. Sends the link to the partner. And before you know it, you could have a booking. So this is what we're sort of saying. So when it comes to content, um, Rob, and we're, we're in here, like you've got these little things. So obviously you've spoken about video, which is what you're a massive fan of, and you do great video. I, I, I love the work. And you've got Thanks, images here, and you can do posts. So how would you go about constructing a post on LinkedIn, what would you be talking about, especially specifically for the world of, of, of hospitality? How would you be sort of bridging this? And what are the key things to look out for when you hit start a post? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I like all types of posts, you know, uh, whether it's images or videos, or even there, you'll see the third icon is uh, documents. Uh, so, um, I like videos the most, obviously, if you guys, if you guys go and browse through my, my feed, it'll be mostly videos. Uh, but I'm all about, um, you know, repurposing content as well. So, uh, for you guys, I think the best thing to do, um, for most industries is really to storytell and to make the hero, your customers. Um, so rather than just like, you know, talking and always having the camera pointed at you and saying how awesome you are. Um, then if you have the opportunity to, um, you know, have some guests uh, come by and, you know, just take a couple minutes of their time, maybe when they're on their way out, um, after they've had an experience at your property to um, maybe ask them for a video or like, hey, can you say a few words about your experience, that sort of thing. Um, that's, that's one really good type of content. Again, like Mark was saying, pattern dis disrupts. So, um, you know, a lot of the things that you'll see on LinkedIn right now are very much business, corporate, um, you know, uh, motivational stuff. People will share blog posts and those kind of things. Kind of like what I kind of see LinkedIn, kind of like what Facebook was a little while ago where people were sharing like blog posts and all those kind of things. But, um, yeah, so sharing stories. Um, you know, sharing things that are happening throughout your day. Uh, LinkedIn still, you know, I think the, the sweet spot, if you're going to, if you're going to be creating videos, um, don't make them too long. So anywhere from 60 to 90 seconds at the most, um, I've seen some people get away with like two or three minute videos and still have pretty good engagement. That's just because they've, they have a really big following. Uh, but if you're starting out, keep it, you know, under a minute. Um, and just be very, very short and quick. Now, if you have a longer video that maybe if I'm not sure, Mark, if a lot of the viewers are creating longer form videos, then 
you can yeah. tease them on LinkedIn and then send them to say the YouTube channel or Facebook or wherever that longer form video lives. Uh, maybe your blog, you know, um, but that's another strategy as well. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, to, to be perfectly honest, we've got people in the group um, that are at a different scale. Some people have YouTube channels. Some people haven't even got a YouTube account. Some people are creating videos. Some people aren't even touching it. I do think live video will open up the doors to so many more people because it's literally a case of just pop open your phone and hit a button. Mm -hmm. I think they, they're... they're the, the, the reluctance to do a video as such is that people get into their heads that it has to be all singing, all dancing, done in iMovie with like flashing images and properly edited with a proper Canon camera. And that's not the case. You know, you see 90% of my videos is done with, with one of these, you know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's done with an iPhone and yeah. So I think it's, it's really, that's a really good bit of advice. Keep the video short, sharp and sweet, which is something that, I think for a lot of people, the advice you gave there was perfect. And I, I, I always give this as an example of guest experiences, talking, you know, make, the, make the, the, the content that you create about your guests, not about you saying how good your property. And I do like that. And the example I give is two years ago, we were traveling through India, me, Laura, and the two boys at the time. And we doing a stop off in the middle of nowhere in, in Rajasthan and the guest house owner was pretty switched on pretty cool they all they, you know they, they all have phones they're all doing the social media over there which, which was cool but the the owner on the way out he pulled his phone out and just said do you mind if I just get a, a video of you and your family just talking about your experience here and I was like we're in the middle of nowhere and this this guy just got his phone out and he, he went live on Facebook and he just yeah. asked a few questions and that video he posted it he didn't even think about it it got seen by loads of people and you know it was a pattern disrupt to certain extents because you know I've got um, two uh, boys blonde hair blue eyes dimples you know Laura blonde hair blue eyes dimples and that people just on their phones and stuff and they just see these these two little blonde kids with blue eyes and dimples and it's just like well what, what is this and we're just chatting and the boys were being all funny and doing that stuff and it got seen by so many people all he did yeah. was ask got permission phone out live us as a literally less than 90 seconds two minutes and we had to jump in the car to get to the next location and that was it he didn't have to do any fancy editing he didn't have to do any um, get a, uh, get get all his equipment set up with his tripod, literally phone in front of us asking questions, and that's all it was. And this is the sort of barriers that you got to break down with video. And hundred percent, if if when live video comes a bit more mainstream on LinkedIn, you can do something like that. But the cool thing is, is that you could do that. Go on Facebook, right? It saves mm -hmm. to your phone when you go live on on Facebook. You can save it to your phone, take mm -hmm. it, open up the app on um, LinkedIn. And post that video to LinkedIn. Put a nice little title, and we'll talk about titles and these hashtag things in a second. A nice little title, so it's just say, you know, Mark Simpson from, from Scarborough shares his experience of what it's like to stay at Insert Property. And mm -hmm. it's as simple as that. You don't have to craft uh, an essay. <laughs> you know, it's just a case of short, sharp, sweet, video, done. So um, just exactly. very quickly talking about the title then what you say the, the video has to be less than two, three minutes, which is great. But again, title, um, any advice or tips just to sort of further on to the point that I put about that? Is there anything you should be really putting in there? Is, you know, emojis, do you use emojis? Like, what's the sort of thing to get the attention on there? Yeah, uh, mix it up. I use both. You know, I usually, um, my, my main thing I think is uh, don't make it too long. Right. So if you look at some of these, uh, Mark, if you scroll up to the Regis one, just right above you. So you'll see. Ah, yeah. That, yeah. There you go. Uh, one more up. One more up. Sorry. Uh, one Ed, right above it. Yeah. So you'll see here like Ed Davies. So his post gets cut off after the third line and there's a see more. Yeah. So be aware of that. Um, if you have a call to action to say like, hey, uh, go to my website or check out my video on YouTube or, you know, whatever that call to action is. Make sure you put that, try to put that link, if you're linking out, um, if you have to put it in the post, put it within the first three lines. Yeah. Now, best practice is to not actually put a link in the, in the post caption itself, meaning yeah. like right there, yeah. um, and to put the link in the first comment. 
yeah. for anyone that's just starting out, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, uh, for for different reasons, basically LinkedIn doesn't like you telling people to leave LinkedIn. So try not to put that link that that link in the copy. But when you're just beginning, you know, you're just starting out. Don't worry about it too much. Um, just be just understand that the first three lines is usually what shows up, and then the rest goes to the see more. So try to be short and sweet. You know, um, kind of the thing that I'm learning with storytelling nowadays, is, especially in the copy. And most books are kind of like this as well. Is try to start in the middle of your story. So um, you know, so you're gonna drop them into the middle of whatever that that um, story you're trying to tell, so that they it piques their interest and then they end up reading or watching that video for sort of the rest. I like um, that. That's, that's really yeah. good. So just focus on that a little bit, so you drop people into the middle of the story. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, yeah, and then short and sweet, emojis or not, you know, emojis, I think, you know, if you're not overusing it, does get a bit more attention. Um, but yeah, play around with it. Yeah, sure. like this, uh, for example, um, Sandra yeah. Martin, new property launched, two little house emojis instantly. So, you know, you could, um, she's done a, a picture of the room there, which, which is great. I do like what Helen Pritchard, um, for those of you who don't know Helen Pritchard, and I'm fortunate to know her, she's really, really good on, on the LinkedIn. So everything she does, mm -hmm. it's, line to the point bit of a space in bit of a gap and then it's it, it's on yeah. she knows that the seymour's coming up here yeah. um i think yeah. ed from, from what i've seen I, I follow obviously ed on social media this is um he's got um automated um tools going on here so i think this mm -hmm. is something is he's, he's, he definitely posted this on facebook or something like this and i think he's got the automated to go into linkedin so um 100%, just like Facebook, don't put your links in the actual post because, again, LinkedIn want people to stay on mm -hmm. their platform, just like Facebook, for as long as possible. And if you put a link uh, in here to go elsewhere, then they'll, they, they won't let people see it as, as much. So definitely some really good bits of advice. Let me just go back up here for a second. Now, hashtags. What mm -hmm. do you know about LinkedIn hashtags? Because I know nothing. I know that obviously hashtags are really popular in uh, Twitter. Hashtags are really important and popular in Instagram. Mm -hmm. Obviously, hashtags are not that popular or important in Facebook. But where does it sit with the world of, of LinkedIn? Yeah, that's really good. That's a really good point. I'm I'm not too sold on hashtags. I know uh, LinkedIn started pushing hashtags a little while ago, and I've been I've been using them and just kind of seeing what. But I mean, first of all, there's really, unless I'm missing something, there's really no place to kind of see your stats and analytics on your, um, how many, how much people are discovering you from hashtags. So yeah. like if it was like hashtag, you know, online courses, yeah. um, and somebody clicked on that somewhere else and then found me because I ended up on the feed, I'm not too sure how, you know, um, how useful that is. The only way I use hashtags is, is for my own name um, because when I have a when I create videos right and I do that a lot on LinkedIn there's really no repository or like some type of like gallery of all my videos um, you know kind of like YouTube right yeah. so um, I got and this is not my original idea this is from another um, creator that I learned this from is to use hashtags um, not to be discovered, but to actually just like direct people to all of your content, all of your videos. I like that. Uh, so, um, and yeah, that's why, that way, you, and that's why you put Rob hashtag Rob. Um, exactly. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you pronounce so, your surname again? Bala, <laughs> Bala, <laughs> Bala Sabis. Bala Sabis. Yeah, yeah. Where's that from again? Uh, where's the Philippines. name? Philippines. Philippines. Nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I might, I get a tongue twister when I try and pronounce it. Hey, close enough, close enough. <laughs> Just right. Rob B is fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like that. So I've just quickly done um, the hashtag book direct. So I, I, for anybody that is watching, in my, I just randomly did a post. I will delete it later. Just hashtag book direct. So the only people that I see talking about that is people that I am connected with. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's like, I mean, with Twitter, Mm -hmm. uh, people use hashtags because it's a great way to start a conversation and you can find pretty much everybody that's got an open profile who's talking about it. Same with Instagram. With LinkedIn and with Facebook, there's certain security settings 
um, which make it a lot more harder. But like what Rob said, that's a really good point from the content creator who said that. And you see this a lot on Facebook. So people will use a hashtag and people go and you can encourage people to click on it to see about what you're talking about. So the big hashtag and the big words in the moment in hospitality is book direct. So book mm. direct is a big movement that is going on that encourages people to book directly with the property instead of going via um, a third party software third party. like mm -hmm. booking.com Expedia. So people go book right. direct. And so you can start to use that to find out more where, where, where you've talked about it a lot more. So obviously I've clicked on that and this is the people that I'm connected with on, on LinkedIn. So uh, uh, Jay William, I'm not too sure who, who that is, but Richard Munro, uh, CEO of um, Australia Association of Accommodation over in Australia, I've got Charlotte who's in Dubai, Yvonne Hallen, everybody knows Yvonne UK, she, she's uh, uh, helping the B&B world, Kay Taylor, part of the uh, Boothley Academy hospitality community and she's using uh, the Boothley video here which, which, is, which, is, which is great, you know, so people can sort, you can, again, you can use it in many different ways but uh, having a hashtag, like you say, if you... Give it a go, experiment it, be consistent, and, 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 see, and see what happens. All right, I yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah. Is good. there anything else? So we've, we've covered really some really good basics there. Um, with connections, again, connect away. Yeah. Um, for the world of hospitality, you know, you can be a little bit more loose on who you accept of a connection because you never know who might be interested in, in, in staying. Um, is there any other basics that you can pass pass on? Is there anything else to spot from from here, or yep. how would you? Uh, yeah, any, any yep. other bit of pearls of wisdom you sure. can pass on? Sure. Yeah, I think just touching on uh, connections. Um, I would. So first thing, when you do. Um, so Mark, uh, let's see. My network. Um, if you see, so Mark there has a note from BizBuddy. Um, hey Mark, uh, have you come across? So there's a little note there, and so that's really important. I find if you are going to be requesting to connect with someone, you can add a note to that request and you can say like, Hey Mark, uh, you know, we connected on Facebook live, um, in the Boostly group, uh, would love to connect with you and start chatting about opportunities where we can collaborate. So, um, by putting a note like that, uh, then it reminds that person who you are. And if they're getting a lot of requests, yours will pop up and say, Oh yeah, this person there's yeah, see here. So you can click add note. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's really important, you know, especially if you're really wanting to make a connection with someone that's a potential partner or... Yeah. Um, that's you know. a massive bit of advice. You see so yeah. many people that just uh, treat it like you're at an event and you're just throwing out business cards. So yeah, nobody, exactly. Nobody, yeah. that is such an old age shotgun approach. It's just mm -hmm. like throwing out all these lines and just seeing if one can catch a fish. It just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. People are wise to that. So if you really want to connect, then mm -hmm. you've got to actually go in and um, let me just, yeah, so I've, I've gone in and it didn't even give me a chance to, to, to speak to, to, to properly reach out to, to a, a yeah. channel. But what I, what I would recommend doing would be in the network is if you come across somebody, say for example, because people in this feed here will be people that you're connected to, but sometimes what you'll see is that they will comment on a post or they'll share a post. And it's something that you think, oh, that is a really cool person. I'm just trying to find one here that they've commented on, but nothing's thrown up uh, here. Okay, mm -hmm. so say that Lee, Lee Wesley has commented on this. So I don't mm -hmm. follow and I'm not connected to Shane Whitfield, but I like this, you know, and I go, okay, this is really cool. So yeah. I click onto Shane's account. And then I, I click on connect and I say, if I really want to connect to him, this is something like, yeah, I, I, I really want to do this. Then I'll, I'll click on here and I'll click on add a note. You yeah. reach out with a personal message. So for you as a hospitality owner, it may be somebody in your local area, it might be a business. It may be somebody that you recognize. Um, mm -hmm. It may be somebody from school that you want to reconnect with or just a friend of a friend, or it could be somebody who is, and this is a, a, a sort of an offshoot of another video that we've done Say you want to connect with a PA or a placement officer of a local big business. So when people come into town, contractors are coming into your town or city and they're looking for places for them to stay and you want to connect with them. You can mm -hmm. pop a message in and just go, hey, this is Mark from the Granary in Scarborough. Uh, we're a, a local farm state business. 
but we have got special rates for local businesses for contractors that are coming in. Um, I did this tactic because close to us, there was a, a really big uh, mining project going on and they were bringing in people from all over the world and they were actively and looking for accommodation. I mm -hmm. reached out, we got close to the PA of the local Sirius Minerals placement office and we got people coming to stay with us and it, and it booked out a room pretty much all year, which, which was great. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind, you only get 300 characters to be short, sharp, sweet and to the point send your invite and if you're if you're clever as well you can maybe google the name so uh shane whitfield um whatever his business is go on to google you might be able to find an email address or a twitter and then just say hey i've sent you a request on linkedin would love to chat yeah again that's and great you're going to get loads of people sending you notifications and and so you've got to be you know so look at what it is i mean i i personally my rule of thumb is i ignore anybody who doesn't send me a message so if anybody mm -hmm. doesn't send me like craft out a message, they're just doing the shotgun approach because there's, there's two ways to get a, a, a notification out. So number one is you'll just find somebody, but what LinkedIn do, which is very clever, is they get you to connect up your Gmail, your email, your social media. And then what you'll find a lot is that LinkedIn will send you a little notification saying, hey, why don't you just go look at everybody you've ever been friend with on Facebook? Why do you go <laughs> see if there's anybody on your Gmail that you can connect with? And then you can literally got a button where you can select all and connect. Now I made that yep. mistake all those years ago and I've got over 2000 connections that I've people that I just do not want to connect with. So I'm slowly going through the process of removing 90% of them to focus on just the 10% of people I want to connect to on, on LinkedIn. So be careful. Don't just go and mass add everybody because it's scummy and spammy and you know, it doesn't help you in the, in the medium to long term. Yeah. So yeah. No, right. yeah, totally, totally. Is there, is there anything else? One final thing. Can I, can I, can I give one more? And yeah, I think no. um, really important. I think this is more in general and social media is if you're, is, is basically first thing is just start posting, start creating content and conversation. Um, but also you're asking about what kind of content to create, no matter what kind of content you're creating, try to end off with a question. Um, again, it's all about engagement, right? So we're talking about followers and all that stuff to, you know, to, to really, to really win on social. It's not about having the most followers. It's having the most engagement. So um, with LinkedIn, um, and really on any social Facebook or Instagram, um, ask questions that way it entices people to comment, right? Um, don't ask very like the deepest life, you know, questions about life in general, ask really low hanging fruit questions that are really easy to answer that they are open to answering publicly. Um, so ask those kind of questions that way people can comment and you can then start a conversation. Um, and so that's one tip. And then the last tip I want to give, is a uh, comment. So if you don't, if you're a little bit shy and maybe you don't want to be creating a lot of video content or a lot of content in general, um, start commenting. Like the way that the algorithms work on LinkedIn right now is that even if you're commenting, so if I comment on Mark's post, um, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to notify all the people that have also engaged with that post that Mark put up. So people that I might not be connected with, but I probably want to be connected with, right? Because if they're going to be like Mark, they're going to be awesome and I want to connect with them. So um, yeah, so see here, people are like getting, Mark's getting notified that people have commented on his post or, um, or uh, people have commented on a post that Mark also commented on. So again, you're going to be in the radar now of other people that you're likely wanting to connect with. So if you don't want to create your own content, um, commenting is also a form of content. So, you know, comment on three or four things a day, right? It's not, it's not going to take up too much of your time. It's going to take a few minutes and just add value to those conversations. Um, so the people that have commented on that or following that post will be notified, but also that person that put up that post is going to appreciate it because you're also giving them some love on LinkedIn and, and giving them some, some value to that post. Yeah. Um, Having more comment, yeah, having content like that, having comments and things like that, that, in, that um, you know, lengthens the, the shelf life of your post, right? It, it prevents it from getting forgotten, you know, within, you know, a day or two. Um, literally, I have posts right now from two or three weeks ago that are still getting comments because there's a conversation. So the next thing is when someone comments, comment back, 
answer their question or add value to that conversation and then maybe add, ask another question, right? It just, you know, keeps that circle going. So, and I, and I, know, I will guarantee, I know what are going through a couple of people's minds. I haven't got the time. Now this is really, 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 really important. Um, yeah. Rob hit the nail on the head with, with all social media, not just uh, LinkedIn or, or Facebook or whatever is, is ask questions like low hanging fruit questions. For example, if you've seen some of my posts recently, it is what's your favorite YouTube channel? You know, what is your YouTube channel? What is your favorite Spotify playlist? You know, things like, like this where people will go and engage in, you know, mm -hmm. um, you don't have to ask their, their political views or what they think of Brexit. No. You know, you don't have to go down that route. You know, you don't have to talk about the meaning of life. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's simple things that people can easily interact with. Polls, for mm -hmm. example, on Facebook is really popular at the moment because it's literally a case of vote, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so when it, when it comes to LinkedIn and when it comes to Instagram, when it comes to Facebook, there's definitely a case of overwhelm here. You can easily get mm -hmm. into your mind. Like I have to be on everything. No, you don't. If you feel like LinkedIn is where your audience is or your potential guests are, then go to LinkedIn. If 80% of your potential guests are going to be on Facebook, focus on Facebook. If you think that your potential guests will be on Instagram, go to Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. go where mm -hmm. your people already are because it will, it, it will help in the long run. If you've already mastered things like Facebook and you pretty much got it automatized and, and it's running itself and it can look after itself, check mm -hmm. out LinkedIn. It's just five, 10 minutes a day max. And you can even just take, a post that has worked really well on Facebook in the past, maybe a year ago or six months ago or three months ago, taking it, opening up your app, get your image, do a little different type of subject heading or a title heading and just put it on there. So it's, it, it takes very, 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 very little, uh, just to give it a go, give it a month, give it 90 days. If at the end of it, you've got nothing from it, just make sure the basics that Rob has spoken about and then leave it. You know, automatize it. If, if you're getting absolutely nothing from it, you don't enjoy it, don't stress too much about it. And I think that's, that's really important. Now, Rob has uh, very kindly said that he's going to leave us with something. He's been really del delving deep into LinkedIn and he's helping business owners all over the world, not just hospitality, get a little bit more of an idea with LinkedIn. And just tell us a little bit with the challenge that you've got going on with a little bit of training that you've got going on when it comes to LinkedIn and how can people more importantly, get involved if they want to. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks everyone for, for watching this video. But yeah, I've, uh, I've really found a lot of value by uh, creating video content specifically on LinkedIn. I know that's not, a, that's not something a lot of people are comfortable with. So what I've actually created is just a free five-day challenge on LinkedIn. Uh, gets you, you know, creating video, um, just using your mobile phone. Uh, for the most part, you can also use your laptop and webcam and all that stuff. And I'll show you how to do that inside the challenge. Uh, but for the most part, it's just uh, uh, your mobile phone. And so I'll show you how to use that, how to create video, even what to talk about and so kind of give you some direction on how to do that. Uh, a lot of people that I've talked to say like, I don't know what to talk about on my videos. So I've given you some uh, direction uh, on how to do that really easily. Uh, so it's a five day challenge. It's been going really well. People have come out of it and then now they're creating uh, video content on LinkedIn regularly and then also even repurposing those videos for Instagram and Facebook now. So it's been really cool. Um, yeah, Mark, I'll just, uh, I'll share the link with you and maybe you can just put it in the yeah. post or in the inside I'll the group. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, what, what we'll do is we'll get Rob in the group as well. So if you've got any follow up yeah. questions after this, I know there's a lot of people asking for LinkedIn. I asked a question recently on the group call and 90% um, of the people wanted LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. I've, I've got a feeling that there might be some questions. So yeah. please be aware that Rob is a, a very busy guy, the time yeah. zones and all that. He, you know, he, he's, he's, he's phenomenally busy, but I, I really appreciate you doing this buddy because it is fantastic. Yeah. And we've, we've, we've not only covered LinkedIn, but I think we've covered social media on a whole of how to, to win. So if you're watching this closely and if you're listening closely and you're making the right notes, you've got tips on LinkedIn here. Yeah. But you've also got tips on how to just sort of win at social media and how to get more eyes on your business and how to get more diet booking. So again, thank you so much. Uh, thank you're you for welcome. tuning in and yeah, uh, uh, like I say, we'll get the link below, get on LinkedIn, and if you've got any other questions, you know where we are.